Welcome to Here Now, a season of audio theater from Keen Company. We're an award-winning nonprofit theater in New York City, championing identification and connection through stories about the decisive moments that change us. I'm Jonathan Silverstein, the artistic director, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to 1993 by Finkel, the first production in our season of audio theater. Join us in embracing the virtual off-Broadway experience. Take a moment to find your seat, silence any distractions, and lower your house lights. It's time to settle in for a night at the theater and enjoy 1993. Alarm clock, AM, autumnal equinox. City. Everything I was doing, I was doing wrong. I was only 21. So young. I went out every night and worked all day. Well, actually, I slept during the day and I worked at night. Yeah, you'll talk about it later. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. We go to Boy Bar on Thursday night. Thursday night. Flamingo East was Wednesday, Wednesday right. right. Yeah. The Wonder Bar had a back room. If you were there too, I probably slept with you. That was my 1993 Were you alive in 1993? Did you live in New York City? Do you remember anything that happened in the world that year? Do you remember anything that happened to you that year? What was your favorite song? Your favorite book? What kind of clothes did you wear? How long was your hair? Did you even have hair? I had a lot of hair then, but I hated it. I hated a lot about myself. 1993 1990 1993 And now, episode one, Low Romance, Swift.
seven dollars. Thank you. Welcome to the boy bar, baby. Wanna do a bump? A bump of what? Special K. Ketamine. It's a horse tranquilizer. Come on. It'll blow your mind. And then I can blow you. Get your hands off me. Fine, but do you still want to do a bump? Yeah. Oh, I'm having trouble putting sentences together. It levels out. It's good for dancing. Cut it with a red echo. Can you taste it? Oh, sweetie, are you okay in there? Nice penny loafers. <laughs> you look like you just came from a bar mitzvah. You're in a K-hole, huh? Don't take drugs from strangers, kid. You smell nervous. I feel bad taking advantage of you right now. But a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Gotta slide your wallet out of your back pocket. Swift. <laughs> See ya. Leaving so soon. I need to report my wallet was stolen. What's your policy? Le Boy Bar is not responsible for any items that are lost or stolen. There was a guy, he just left, I think. He was wearing a white t-shirt. You are describing 90% of our clientele. Except you. Look at you in your cardigan. It's a v-neck. And it's cashmere. Ooh la la. Off with it! We don't believe in sweaters below 14th Street. I need my wallet back. And I need a million dollars. Well, let's focus on things that are more realistic, like you and me. What's your name? Steven. With a P-H or a V? With a V. Steven with a V for V-neck atrocity. <laughs> Let me get a good look at you. How old are you? 21. I give you two years max. For what? Before your beauty abandons you. Right now, in the glow of youth, you're a solid seven and a half. But when the lights fade, you'll be lucky to be a six. But that's all right. Sixes and sevens are the hottest lays. Sixes and sevens will take you to motherfucking heaven. My name is Byron. Six, six, and seven, six, six, and seven, six, six, and seven, take me to heaven, heaven, yeah, heaven, yeah, heaven, yeah, heaven, yeah, don't want no eight or nine, don't want no eight or nine, better than an eight or nine, too big, ow, seven's fine, they were caught up for the prize, six and seven, please be mine, not icky, wicky, teeny, beanie, shake them like Martini six six seven seven take me to heaven heaven yeah heaven yeah heaven yeah heaven yeah don't want no eight or nine no don't want no eight or nine well you know on occasion an eight or nine's okay 
but a six and seven can last me all day. I like your apartment. Tell me what you like about it. Well, I like the way you decorated it. It's very uh, bohemian. I like how you have that cool shade over the lamp in the corner. That's a caftan. And this poster. It's not a poster, darling. It's oil. A gift from a French aristocrat who used to keep me in a cage in Paris when I was a little thing like you. He kept you in a cage? Let's not talk about the past. Mm -hmm. Come, sit with me. But before we go any further, there's something you should know. I have AIDS. Have you ever been with someone with AIDS before? No. Are you scared? No. You should be. But I'm glad you're not. Did you know my last name is Flowers? Byron Flowers. And I'm meant to deflower you. What makes you think I haven't been deflowered already? <laughs> I'm going to teach you everything correctly. Safety first. Condoms are too unreliable, and I want to make sure we are as safe as possible. My method of safest sex is simply to wrap my partner entirely in saran wrap. It's quite straightforward. I have an industrial-sized box of saran wrap that I keep here in this cupboard. I pull a long piece off. And then I wrap it around our waist, sort of like a mini skirt. Then I poke holes for private parts. And then finally, I wrap our phalluses in saran wrap as well and slide little pieces in between cracks. And now we get to it. Doesn't it all just fall off? Hush up. You're spoiling the mood. Hello. Hi. Years from now, when you speak of this, and you will, be kind. Uh, okay. That was a quote from a play. Tea and sympathy? I don't really read. Nobody's perfect. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I find your youth very inspiring, Stephen. You have it all ahead of you. All your dreams, all your possibilities. When I was your age, I had big dreams. Not that I don't have dreams anymore. It's just the dreams have gotten smaller as I've gotten older. But can I tell you a secret? My dream now would be the headline, Wig Stock. Oh, wouldn't that be wild? Have you ever been? No. What happens just a block over in Tompkins Square? All the greatest downtown performers, drag queens and kings, acts of all sizes, shapes, abilities, and colors. It's in August. Well, we'll go together, if you're still around. Yeah, okay. You know what? I'm suddenly seized by this idea. A New Year's resolution. I'm going to play Wigstock this summer. Why couldn't I? I'm not just a door person. I'm a star. Well, if RuPaul can do it, why can't I? Well, of course I'm significantly older than her, but like the great Lucille Lortel says, Age is nothing but a number, and mine is unlisted. <laughs> I'd have to come up with a name. Maybe you would help me. You're my muse. But enough about me. 
tell me about you. What are your dreams, Stephen? What is it that you want? I'm not sure. I, I think I'll know it when I see it. Well, I know what I want. More of you. Is that terrible of me? I, I need to deal with the fact that my wallet was lifted last night, and that will prevent you from coming back to my place. I should probably head home and... And where's home? I've been staying with a friend uptown. It's just temporary, just until I can find a place down here. You can move in with me. You want me to move in with you? You don't even know me. You'll move in and we'll get to know each other. I'll give you a draw for whatever things you want to leave with me. Here's a key. I need to think about it. Well, don't think about it too long. My offer is only on the table for a limited time. Ooh, look who it is. Hiya, Byron. Want a piece of bacon? You know I don't eat that shit. Besides, looks more like you're having chicken. <laughs> He's talking about you, you know. Jean Wayne Jenner is his name. He's got a sort of neighborhood fame. He'll steal your money, he'll steal your heart. He'll screw your debt, Max, at your credit card. Jean, Stephen. Jean is my downstairs neighbor and a vegan. Charmed, I'm sure. Steven lost his wallet last night at the boy bar. Is that right? Perhaps you know something about that. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Jean-Wayne Jeanette waits quietly. Don't ever doubt a man who needs to be free. And where are you off to? I gotta go see a guy about a thing. You are the true definition of shady. First thing to know, yeah. Sean moves slow. Oh. Sean moves slow. Pleasure oh. meeting you, kid. See you around. Sean and Jenny. Needs to be free. He lives below you? Has been. Going on five years now. I think I will take that key after all, Byron. Welcome. Welcome to 512 East 5th Street. Hi. I need to jump in here for a sec. I'm Finkel. I created this story. Occasionally, I'm going to break into an episode to highlight things I think are important. Right now, I want to highlight the importance of 512 East 5th Street. You know, 512 is not just where Genet and Byron and now Stephen live in 1993. It's also where I lived. Um, okay, so uh, I graduated from college from NYU a semester early in the December of 1992, which looking back on it, it's like, why did I leave school semester early. Like, what was the rush? Um, but anyway, um, my friend Brooke, who I had met in Shakespeare class and really liked, um, she and I decided that we wanted to live together and we wanted to live in the heart of everything. And so we looked for an apartment or apartments in Alphabet City and um, we found 512. We had a converted two bedroom, which means it was really just a one bedroom with a wall dividing the bedroom in two. I remember that the wall didn't go all the way to the top. There was like a foot or two of space, which I presume was for ventilation, but it ultimately made both Brooke and I feel as if we never truly had any privacy. We paid $1,100 which now seems like a steal, but at the time was a lot of money. 
Um, but it was okay because Brooke had a job working as a, a, in a restaurant and I had gotten a job at a fancy hotel working the night shift and we were both making a pretty good amount of money. Um, and besides, these were just jobs to make, you know, some cash. Like we both had big dreams. Um, and my dream in 1993 well, it wasn't even a dream. It was like, I felt like I had a calling. Like I believed it was my destiny to become a pop star. And, um, so in in order to, uh, achieve my destiny, I borrowed a friend's four track recorder. Um, I got a keyboard from another friend and I borrowed a couple microphones and some echo and reverb pedals from some other friends and a whole bought a whole bunch of cassette tapes, you know, and I spent the better part of the year making my debut pop album, which I called you. (laughs) I'm just going to let that uh, title sit there. Uh, We'll get back to that title for sure. Anyway, when I was finished with the album, at the end of the year, I proceeded to never play it for anyone ever in the entire world. Like I held onto the tape a really long time, but somewhere in one of the many moves that I've made in the last 15 years, the tape has gone missing from my life. In a lot of ways, this entire piece is my way of trying to replicate that album. Like, which of course is impossible. I hardly remember any of the songs, but I'm trying to capture something of its energy. Like I remember it as like a gloriously sloppy affair. It was needy and emotional and dirty and truthful and songs started in weird places and ended on strange notes. And my voice was like searching itself the whole time and I never properly mixed it. And yet I remember like loving every note of it and listening to it over and over, trying to hear it through someone else's ears. You know, what would someone else think? Why did I never let myself find out? Anyway, um, okay, so 512 East 5th Street, back to that. It sits between Avenue A and Avenue B. It's a pretty nondescript tenement building. It has four floors and seven apartments. On the first floor in the front lives like, uh, we'll just call this woman Mrs. Kravitz. There was like an old woman who lived there. She's not important to the story. And in the first floor in the back, there was a guy, Mr. Fritz. He had died two years previous to the story starting. On the second floor in the front is Lorena, who the entire second episode is about. So you meet her soon. Um, And in the back on the second floor is where Brooke and I lived. On the third floor, right above us in the back is where Jean-Wayne Genet lived in a tiny studio. Um, And on the fourth floor is where Byron lives. Years ago, he had gotten permission to break down the wall between two apartments. And so he had a floor through and he got southern and northern light. It's like a romantic space full of scarves and paintings and knickknacks that are like from all around the world. Anyway, I'm going to jump ahead uh, in the story now. It's the next day. Stephen has officially moved into Byron's place. Byron, who's like thrilled about this, has decided he wants to make a celebratory dinner. But there's nowhere... Well, there were no like gourmet markets in the East Village in 1993. So he walks west on 4th Street to 6th Avenue. He just walks a couple more blocks up to Balducci's, where he buys a chicken and sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts and onions and garlic to roast and a really nice bottle of Pinot Noir. Stephen, meanwhile, is taking a shower. Hello? Hello? Oh, okay, one sec, I'm coming. I'm coming. One sec. (laughs) 
Oh, hey. I think this is yours. What? Uh, my wallet. See ya. Wait. My wallet? He brought me back my wallet. This has been episode one of 1993 by Finkel, directed by Jonathan Silverstein. All voices, music, sound, noise, and silence created and compiled by Finkel. Publishing assistance by Garrett Schultz. This performance is part of Keen Company's Here Now season of audio theater, led by artistic director Jonathan Silverstein. The season's audio consultant is Garrett Schultz. The Here Now theme is composed by Billy Reese. Enjoying what you've heard so far? Hit the subscribe button in your podcast app. And please take a moment to rate us and leave a review. Want exclusive perks, bonus content, and invites to virtual opening night parties? Sign up for a Here Now season membership. Packages start at just $1 a month. Looking to support off-Broadway theater artists? Make a tax-deductible gift to Keen Company and contribute to Stories of Connection. Learn more at www.keencompany.org. Thank you for listening. I look forward to joining you at the virtual theater again soon. <laughs>